Hello, great to see you again. Recently, a scientist proposed a hypothesis suggesting that an experiment conducted by NASA's Viking lander in 1976 may have accidentally killed living microorganisms on Mars. Specifically, on June 27, 2023, Dirk schultz mckuch an astrobiologist at the Technical University of Berlin, suggested that the Martian rock samples, collected by NASA's Viking lander 47 years ago, might have contained tiny life forms capable of surviving the harsh Martian environment. Subsequent experiments by the Viking lander might have accidentally killed them before we even recognized what they were. This hypothesis stems from the inconclusive results of the life detection experiments conducted on Mars. This speculation inadvertently paints humans as an insensitive species that killed the first extraterrestrial life they encountered. Please take your seats and fasten your seatbelts as we use our time machine to go back to the 1970s and see if NASA accidentally killed life on Mars. NASA's Viking program was humanity's first space mission to safely land a spacecraft on Mars and send back close-up images of the fourth planet in our solar system. Two identical spacecraft, Viking 1 and Viking 2, were built. Each spacecraft consisted of a lander and an orbiter, which traveled together to Mars's orbit. The landers then separated and descended to the planet's surface in July, September 1976. You are looking at images of the Martian surface taken by the cameras on the Viking 1 and 2 landers. And of course, NASA spent more than $5 billion not just to take a few pictures. The Viking program had three main objectives take high-resolution images of the Martian surface, study the structure and composition of the atmosphere and surface of Mars, and most anticipated, search for evidence of life on the planet. The initial experiment focused on detecting organic or carbon-containing compounds in Martian soil. The second experiment sought to identify metabolic activities within the soil. The third experiment tested the conversion of inorganic carbon to organic compounds. The fourth experiment analyzed changes in crucial gas components like oxygen, CO2, and nitrogen within the isolated soil samples. Experiments two and three indicated slight changes in gas concentrations, suggesting potential microbial activity in the soil. Experiment one also detected some organic compounds. Yet the fourth deemed crucial experiment yielded no positive results, leading to widespread disappointments in many astronomic communities. Because of the negative results of experiment four, NASA scientists also believed that the organic compounds found in Experiment 1 were contaminants from cleaning solutions used during the construction of the spacecraft. This skepticism was encapsulated in a statement by a Viking project scientist, no bodies, no life. Essentially, this meant that without discovering organic compounds, which are fundamental to cell formation, there could be no life on Mars. The majority of the scientific community's belief in Martian life waned until 2008, when the Phoenix lander, a successor to Viking, revealed that organic compounds containing perchlorate ions naturally exist in some Martian rocks. Subsequent confirmations by the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers further supported this finding. We remain unable to ascertain whether these compounds result from biological processes or are merely the product of non-biological chemical reactions. At the time of the Viking landings, there was minimal knowledge about Mars's environment. Since Earth is abundant in water, introducing water to Martian soil to potentially activate microorganisms or spores appeared to be a logical approach. However, it seems that NASA scientists overlooked the possibility that life does not always require substantial amounts of water. As the environment becomes drier, life gradually adapts to survive with less water. In the driest places, like the Atacama Desert in Chile, you will find bacteria living entirely within salt rocks. The Mars stones, on the other hand, might hold minimal moisture and in theory could support drought-tolerant bacteria similar to those found on Earth. And because these organisms are so accustomed to water scarcity, giving them too much water could overwhelm and kill them. <coughs> this is not a baseless conclusion. A 2018 study published in Scientific Reports showed that unprecedented rain and flooding in the hyper-arid core of the Atacama Desert killed up to 85% of the native bacteria because they couldn't adapt to a suddenly waterlogged condition. To better understand, adding water to a sample of Martian soil full of super drought-tolerant bacteria is like dropping a human in the middle of an ocean. Or imagine an alien spaceship exploring Earth, finding you, for example, stranded in a desert. Instead of providing a few bottles, the aliens decide to save your life by generously dumping an entire ocean on you. While water is essential for survival, using the wrong amount can be deadly. 
Did you know that drinking six liters of water in three hours can be fatal? Really, nigga? Please do not verify this. Okay. Many Viking experiments involved adding water to the soil samples. This could explain the puzzling results. Martian bacteria might not have been able to handle the massive influx of water and passed away soon after, leading to sometimes positive and other times negative outcomes. From this information, we must wonder whether or not the soil samples collected by Viking actually contained hygroscopic salts, and whether the relative humidity at those locations was high enough to sustain life if it existed. The Viking landers touched down near Mars's equator, where soil salt content is relatively low. However, there were high levels of hydrogen peroxide and perchlorate in the soil, both of which are excellent at absorbing moisture. Additionally, Viking also observed fog on Mars, which typically forms in places with nearly 100% relative humidity, suggesting that the Martian atmosphere in the morning and evening would have enough moisture for hygroscopic bacteria to survive. Humans might have inadvertently destroyed life in the initial experiments aimed at discovering it on another planet. In that case, could it be considered an act of destruction born from human enthusiasm combined with ignorance? Please leave your comments. This isn't the first time scientists have suggested that Viking experiments accidentally killed Martian bacteria. In 2007, Jeffrey Cargill and Dirk schultz makuch published a scientific paper proposing that Martian microorganisms might contain hydrogen peroxide, a popular antiseptic product used on Earth with hygroscopic properties in their cells. This evolutionary adaptation would allow them to extract water directly from the planet's atmosphere. Moreover, scientific experiments have shown that a mixture at concentrations of 45.2% dihydrogen monoxide, aka water, and 61.2% hydroperoxide has a very low freezing point at just negative 56.5 degrees Celsius. This means that, in addition to helping Martian life extract water from the air, hydrogen peroxide also keeps water in their bodies in liquid form at Mars's freezing temperatures, preventing the formation of ice crystals that could rupture and kill their cells. You heard correctly, hydrogen peroxide can be used for sterilization, meaning it kills bacteria. However, many bacteria in your mouth can produce and use hydrogen peroxide to support their survival. The bombardier beetle is the perfect example. It can even produce and spray a 25% hydrogen peroxide solution at any threat. This illustrates that while hydrogen peroxide can be a bactericide, it doesn't mean it can't support life. In conclusion, Mars might have harbored, or still harbors, simple life forms adapted to the extremely dry environment by living in salt rocks and absorbing moisture directly from the atmosphere. Alternatively, we may be interpreting unclear data to suggest the presence of life. Perhaps life on Mars never existed, and we'll never know until further explorations. What do you think about the possibility of life still surviving on Mars? As always, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to catch more space content from Omnicessory. If you have any interesting questions would like to ask, don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section, and I will respond to it in the next video. For now, goodbye, and see you again.